Good morning. Oh, come on. Let's, let's do that. Welcome to the last Sunday of 2023. And you may be seated. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. And I know many would be postponing attending the service today in the morning to evening, differing it. But uh, thank you for making sure you are here this morning uh, to worship our God with us here in this place. And um, talking about evening, we have, a, we have a great great service planned for you. And of course, it is the Holy Spirit who, you know, obviously takes control of everything that we do. But we, we are looking forward to what God has in store for us. Uh, and I believe God has a very special word for all of us this evening. Uh, so do make sure you're here at 9.30 this evening. 9.30, we have chai and biscuits served for you. So you can come have hot chai, biscuits before you get into the service. Because we do want to start sharp at 10. One of the reasons why we need to uh, do that is because we want to make sure that we use a, every single minute of what we're going to do this evening, right? Uh, so uh, there are too many things that we, we want to do at the, um, you know, as we enter into the new year. Uh, and we feel that every single thing that we, uh, that we planned and prepared is good for all of us. Uh, not only to s- sit back and relax and look at God with gratitude, also um, you know, celebrate what He has done for us, but also um, be prepared to receive what God has for us for the coming year. I believe God has a word for all of us. So um, make sure you're here a little early. Invite others to join us this evening. Um, so uh, between 9.30 and 10, if you can be here, um, it's easy for you to get a good, good spot right in the front. All right, this, this morning, as uh, I was thinking about um, the word, uh, usually the last Sunday would be the Sunday we talk about gratitude. We talk about how we need to turn back and look at what God has done in, in our lives and for us in, in the last one year. But last week, I was at a, uh, at a house opening. I was, I was doing the dedication for a house uh, while we were there, me and Janet and Pastor Ashwin, uh, praying for them. I, you know, I, I began to read a scripture uh, from, this, from the Bible, and I felt, ah, oh, this is something that I want to share on Sunday morning. And I felt like um, the Holy Spirit is nudging, has nudged my heart to that passage. It may be a very familiar passage to you, but sometimes uh, when we are too familiar with certain scriptures of uh, certain portions of the scripture, we ignore them. We don't actually uh, pay attention to some of the truths that we already know. But I think uh, today I just want to take you there and spend some time uh, talking about that. Uh, last night I was, uh, I was thinking about my life and I was looking, at, looking back at um, my journey with the Lord Himself. It dawned on to me that exactly 30 years back in 1993, December 26th, I've accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. That's 30 years back. It's amazing how God can, you know, take us on this journey of faith where you are the one who's always failing, you are the one who's always unfaithful, You are the one who is not consistent, but God is always consistent, always faithful, always gracious in picking you up every time you fall, in giving you a second chance every time you fail, and in helping you to uh, walk steadily every time you wobble around and shake in your faith and fall down. Um, I, I, I don't think in 1993 I would have thought that I would make it to 2023. Um, I don't think I would have uh, I thought that I can keep up my faith like that uh, in God for 30 years. But I'm grateful to God. Then I also realized that the secret for a long and consistent life in Christian walk is to listen to what God is asking us and following it. And that's what I want to focus on this morning uh, from Deuteronomy chapter 28. Would you like to turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 28? Now, it's a big chapter. 
I, I probably am going to read most of the verses, not right now, but through the sermon. But it's a necessary wor- chapter for us to focus on. Don't worry about the sound. I think the session has already gone up. Um, 68 verses. While the first 14 verses focus on certain things, the rest of the 54 verses focus on a different um, uh, uh, you know, thing. So chapter itself is divided into two parts. First portion is verses 1 to 14, which focuses on the blessings of God. And verses 15 to verses 68, focus on the curses of God. Now, I think we did a, the translators did a big injustice when they called blessings and curses, those verses. I actually think they are called consequences. Not blessings, not curses, but simply consequences. That God is stating something to his people and he's saying, listen, do this. If you do this, this is what will happen. If you don't do this, this is what will happen. Basically, all he's saying is, this is what I want you to do. If you do this, the consequences would be like this. If you don't do this, the consequences would be like this. And simply because certain consequences are positive in nature, we are calling them blessings. Certain consequences are negative in nature, we are calling them curses. So the moment you use, you use the word blessing and curse, you are always going to get scared and you are always going to talk in a, in, a, in a defensive manner. I think that's how uh, you know, a lot of Christians in the 21st century and the church across the globe has um, misunderstood the word blessing and curse and become polarized in their understanding of grace of God. Um, how many of you believe whether it's Old Testament or New Testament is the word of God? Oh, very few people in Capstone. You should stop coming to this church. <laughs> this, is, this is the wrong church for you to be in if you don't believe this is Bible. I mean, this is the word of God. Okay? Just in case if you have questions, stop coming to this church. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm always going to be saying this is the word of God from the word one to the end word. Okay? Hi. Hi, guys. You want to sit here? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, don't ever question what you have in your hand. All right? This, that's the word of God. Whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, which simply means what is revealed in the Old Testament is as applicable as what is revealed in the New Testament to us. If God wanted us, the church, to have only New Testament, he would have given us only New Testament. If he had given us the scripture in its entirety to us, all the 63 books into our hand, how many books? Thank God. Some of us are... See, (laughs) all the 66 books, I'm going to make a lot of those today, okay? (laughs) So please pay attention to the word of God today. All the 66 books into our hand, he wants us to know that these are how you want, he wants us to receive his words. From the first verse in Genesis to the last verse in Revelation, everything is the revealed word of God as he intends for us to learn and know. So that means, if there are certain things that are revealed to us in the book of Deuteronomy, it means that he wants us to know them and know that this is also the word of God and you do need to believe that too. Because there are some churches that will say now in the New Testament, I mean in present day churches, which would say now Old Testament doesn't apply to us. Because we are New Testament believers. I don't really understand what does it actually mean. Whether the Old Testament believer or a New Testament believer, they both believed in the same God. Followed the same word. Do you understand? The only thing that is fulfilled in Christ at the cross is the ceremonial law that God put. God gave 10 commandments. I'm just giving 10 commandments. I'm just using 10 commandments as a reference point right now. He's given multiple commands in the scripture which we're going to talk about. But let's say 10 commandments God gave and he said, you need to do them. If you fail in any one of them, this is what you must do in order to compensate for your failure. Um, Otherwise, you will be put to death. Since you broke my commands, 
the only consequence for that would be death if you disobey god it is sin in the sight of god and the wages of sin is death so anyone who does not obey the word of god must be put to death that's the consequence that's the actual consequence but god decided that he would spare people of that and he want to also help people to understand that on your own you can never keep the law because none of us have the capacity neither the capacity nor the wisdom to follow the law of god as it is will always going to break it so paul explains that in the book of romans saying that the reason god gave us the law is to for us to understand that none of us are capable to, uh, of of doing anything like that and he also said if you follow these this is how it will be if you break them here is the solution for it if you break them you're going to obviously face death so in order to avoid death here is a solution based on your capacity get a bull or get a dog or get something into the um, temple of god and offer it as a sacrifice for that moment when you offer that sacrifice all the sins for which you are offering that sacrifice would be forgiven do you understand that means all your life as long as you live you have to keep doing these things you could you and i could say well we can keep doing that that's not a problem the problem is we never know when we are going to die and at the point of our death would we be even capable of offering a sacrifice and making a um, atonement for ourselves which we cannot we we do, there's no guarantee and so the, there is this perpetual need for offering a sacrifice for us you got to keep doing it in order to satisfy god and we never know when we satisfied god we never know whether we are going to go to heaven or hell because at any point of time we can die and at that point of time we may not be in a position to offer ourselves offer a sacrifice for ourselves so therefore it's guaranteed that we go to hell so god then offered a solution for us in jesus you can never offer a sacrifice for, i mean you you can never stop offering sacrifices because you're always going to sin you're always going to break the law uh, none of us are capable enough or not holy enough to live a complete sin free life so you do need a permanent final solution and so gee, god said I, i as human beings you can never do this let me send my own son to die on your behalf and pay one final permanent solution for you hebrews chapter 1 begins like that that in the beginning god spoke to us at various times through various people in various ways but in these final days god sent his son the radiance of god which is jesus so that he now finished the work on the cross by shedding his blood and is sitting at the right hand of the father one final permanent solution so whatever the ceremonial law was in order to avoid the consequence of sin jesus provided that for us so the solution that we received right now the thing that we don't have to repeat that is prescribed in the scripture is offering other sacrifices for our sins because it's already done in christ christ provides a way for us to believe in that work and be- belong to god now that's it but rest of it is a moral law that's given to us how do we conduct with each other how do we conduct with other people how do we behave in a com- congregation how do we behave in a community how do we behave inside a family how do we behave like a business person how do you behave like a professional how do you behave like a christian all those things the moral law is given in the old testament everything that we read in the old testament majority of it is moral law how do we conduct ourselves rightly personally in private and also in public it has nothing to do with ceremonial law there are simple rules that if we follow we'll be blessed if we break them we will face the consequences which is called curse in the scripture that's it so you can't simply say that is also taken away from us uh, you know that kind of gives you full license to whatever you want if you say that's taken away from us paul said no 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 law law 
is still to be followed only in the light of the grace of god that's the difference now we do we still do what god god has prescribed for us to follow in the word of god so that we can still receive the blessings that god promised does it make sense now okay so the 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 prom, the um, uh, law that is given to us in the scripture the the principles that god laid out for us in the scriptures are still applicable for us while we still live under the grace that means we don't have to fear death for breaking the law because god already paid for it but we also must be careful that we don't break the law because consequences will face here on earth we may not face death but we'll definitely face the consequences and that's why chapter 24 becomes very crucial for us to understand sorry chapter 28 of deuteronomy becomes very crucial for us to understand uh this morning because at right at the end of this year and as we look forward to in the next year and this evening i'll connect this morning's thought this today's thought and then uh, the, you know the this thought to the evening word and i'll i'll uh, you'll you'll then probably understand fully why i'm sharing this this morning it's it's that this that god makes a promise but all the promises of god are conditional the condition is what we are talking about right now in chapter 28 look at those 14 verses let's look at them i'm going to read from nkjv this morning just for the um, i like nlt and i i always use nlt um for, for for public speaking but um normally when i study i usually use esv or nkjv for myself so i i just wanted to read nkjv just for this morning okay i, I don't know what's going to come up on screen but uh, i'm i'm just following nkjv right now now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the lord your god to observe carefully all of his commands which i command you today that the lord your god will set you high above all the nations of the earth now and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the lord your god okay follow those verses very carefully what i'm reading right now blessed shall you be in the city blessed shall you be in the country blessed shall you be uh, blessed shall be the uh, fruit of your body and the produce of your ground and the increase of your herds the increase of your cattle and offspring uh, of your flocks bless shall be your basket and your kneading bowl bless shall be uh, shall you be when you come in and bless shall you be when you go out the lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you before your face they shall come ag- come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways the lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and all to which you set your hand and he will bless you in the land which the lord your god is giving you the lord will establish you as holy people to himself just as he has sworn to you if you keep keep the commands of the lord your god and walk in his ways then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by my name uh, by the name of the lord sorry and they shall be afraid of you and the lord will grant you plenty of good in the uh, in the fruit of your body in the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your ground in the land which the lord swore to your father to give you the lord will open to you his good treasure the heavens to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand you shall lend to many nations but you shall not borrow and the lord will make you head not the tail you shall be above only and not beneath if you heed the commands of the lord your god which i command you today and be careful to observe them so you shall not turn aside from any of the words which i command you this day to the right or to the left to go after other gods to serve them in this 14 uh, and then we'll of course we'll come to the next few next verses to later on in those 14 verses 
there's certain thing that God laid down as a condition, precondition for receiving His blessing. God is making a covenant with His people. Of course, Moses is talking to Israelites. God is speaking through Moses to Israelites as they are looking towards the promised land. And he's saying, listen, I'm going to take you into that promised land, a new place. When you get into the new place, I want to bless you. Everything that you do, I want to bless you. Everything that I'm going to give you, I'm go- I want to bless it. I want to bless you, bless your children. Make sure the work of your hand is yielding its fruit. Making sure that you have food on your table all the time. I want to do that. It is, it is my desire that I want to bless you. But if, if, I, if I need to bless you, if you want to receive that blessing, there's only one condition that I have for you. And that is simply obey my commands. Now, as you look at the, this passage that I've read, you'll obviously realize the first two verses are primarily an introduction uh, to what he was going to talk in the next uh, uh, 13 or 12 verses. In the first verse, he's actually saying, listen, if you obey all that I'm telling you today, I'll make you a great nation. That's the introduction. Then he begins to say, if you listen to the voice of God, this is what I'm going to do. Then in the middle, he says, if you do exactly as I tell you to do, if you obey all my commands and walk in, the, walk in his ways, then this is what I will do. If you continue to do so, not turning to the right or to the left, not turning to other gods, then I will do this. Three levels of obedience. First, he tells us, listen to his voice. Moses is talking to his people and Moses is talking to all of us right now and he's telling us, if you listen to the voice of God. There are certain blessings that will come to us if we fully pay attention to the voice of God. Most of us lose a lot of blessings because we don't pay full attention to the voice of God. I can give a guarantee that 90% of us, when we come to the church, even though we sit for two and a half hours or three hours, that majority of us walk away from here with hardly 5% of what you've received from the pulpit. If I actually ask you outside instead of saying, hi, how are you? If I asked you, what did you learn today? I can give a guarantee most of you would beat around the bush. Like how we did our final exams in, in degree college and all that stuff. That we keep repeating the question. I, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be condescending, but I'm just trying to be realistic. Uh, uh, you know, years of being a pastor, I, can, I know what I'm talking about. Most of us miss a blessing from God simply because we did not pay attention to what he's talking to us. Look at what he's saying. Now let's go to NLT. It's easy for me to read now. It becomes easier to uh, 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 read uh, in NLT. Um, you will experience these blessings. If, I, if you just simply pay attention. That's why I read NKJV because the NKJV gives the differentiation to us. In, uh, uh, in NKJV, when you look at verses 2, it simply says you obeyed the voice of God, right? That means you're paying attention to what he's saying. If you do this, these are the blessings. What are those blessings? Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Wherever you are staying, that place will be blessed. That's what it means. Wherever you are working, your fields, right? Wherever you are working, that place will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. What you have, your children, if you have your children, They'll be blessed. Your crops will be blessed. That means whatever you received as a salary, whatever you received as the produce of your work at the field, that will be blessed. What is in your hand. Okay? It doesn't matter the size of the crop. The crop itself would be blessed. That's the difference. Okay? Remember that. The offspring of your herds and your flocks would be blessed. The fruit baskets and your fruit baskets and bread boards would be blessed. Wherever you need your um, 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 flour in order to make your chapati, that's, that basket would be blessed. Your, your uh, 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 fruit basket, the, the dining table is where we normally put our fruit baskets, right? Right in the middle. That means he's saying your dining table would be blessed. Your kitchen would be blessed, he said. And your, your, your dining table would be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. 
in your coming in your daily commute wherever you're going and coming back go to work or go to do some business go to meet people wherever you go in your going and your coming whatever you do as you go out and come back that will be blessed when if you simply listen to the voice of god it simply means that even if one sunday if you actually pay attention to the voice of god everything that god is speaking to you doesn't matter who is standing here whoever is standing here is sent by god whether it's me or somebody else when they stand here and speak if you with a heart that says i want to receive this i i know this is god speaking and if you receive with that heart pay attention to his voice all these things will be given to you well actually these are already in your hand what god is saying is i will bless that could it be possible that some of us are struggling in our workplaces simply because you are not paying attention to the voice of god could it be could it be possible that some of us are working hard making money but are not able to enjoy the crop because you are not paying attention to the voice of god could it be possible that most of us even though we are making money we are we are buying stuff in our kitchen we always feel there is something lack in our kitchen because we did not listen to the voice of god it's not enough for us to be christians it's more important for god that we pay attention to his voice that even though we have a lot of things in our hands we still cannot live a satisfied life simply because we are not paying attention to the voice of god listen my friends and my family that god already gave you what you have in your hand is already a blessing what he is saying here moses is saying here that there are thing, things that you already have in your hand that's what he's saying you already have your family you got your job you're getting your salaries uh you got your herds you got your flocks you got your kitchen you got your food everything is already given to you what god is trying to say is listen if you can pay attention to what i speak to you every day then what is already in your hand i'll bless it it's big or small doesn't matter whether my salary is big or small doesn't matter anymore whether it's small or big salary in the side of the world i will still use that and make it a blessing for you because god is so good that he can take five loaves and two fish and feed 20000 people he's smart he's is 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 miraculous in that so it doesn't matter if you have five loaves or 50 loaves or 5000 loaves what does it matter for god it doesn't really matter numbers don't work like how they work for us for god it's totally different economy right so what god is saying is whatever you have in your hand i can bless it if you just simply pay attention to what i'm speaking to you don't lose a blessing from god by not listening to his word we have to learn this capstone unlike the whole world unlike other christians don't pay attention to the messenger pay attention to the message don't judge a message by the messenger at all you you're wrong you're always you ne- you will be a right christian right capstonian if you compare a message with a message not a messenger with a messenger does it make sense now yeah then you'll understand it doesn't matter if chaitanya is there somebody else is there we is the message coming right is the word of god that is being brought to us is it right in comparison to the word of god then you are at a right place as a christian for that to happen you need to develop a ear listening ear so what does it mean to listen to the voice of god you will see the the 
the idea much more clearly clearly explained in the life of prophet eli not elijah not elisha eli when god spoke to samuel this 5 year old 3 year old whatever kid and and told them about the future of israel i ever wondered why god spoke to samuel instead of eli who is in the next room who probably has years of experience as a prophet but god was not wrong in speaking to samuel about the future of israel and future of eli and his sons because god already spoke to eli in in chapter 2 of 1 samuel god already sent a word to eli eli himself is a prophet that means he is somebody who brings word to people to him god sent another prophet to speak to him and tell eli eli listen your sons what your sons are doing is wrong better correct them because because of them if you don't correct them because of them whole nation will suffer not only they will suffer anyway but the whole nation will suffer because they represent me in 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 front of the people you better take care of that eli did not correct his children did not pay attention to it fathers and mothers when god speaks to you to correct your children do not hesitate to correct your children um if you don't take up the stick okay because it's prescribed from bible by the way children don't get angry with me but stick is a good thing because god uses stick so don't hesitate to correct your children because you don't want them to be cursed tomorrow you want them to be blessed and it's okay sometimes they get little correction from us i think in, in you know in these modern days we are taught not to say anything not to use harsh language i mean i'm not saying use uh, abusive language that's what i'm saying <laughs> but i think uh, you know we we bible prescribes that we better our children our, our children are very important for us our their future is very important for us and so god, even here when god is speaking to us he's saying i speaking to eli he's saying listen correct your children correct your both both your kids all you have to do is ask them not to do what they're supposed to do what they're doing sorry and do what they're supposed to do eli never corrected so god had to speak to samuel what what happened between chapter 2 and chapter 3 eli lost the hearing he couldn't hear the voice of god anymore so god has to use a little kid that that's the consequence of not hearing the voice of god not developing a listening ear god we not only suffer we make our children suffer because of that and not just that we make the entire community suffer because of us anybody who's attached to us so all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you i love it i love the way it is translated in nkjv not only they come upon you they overtake you you would be like surprised at the way these blessings would come into your life then from verses 7 onwards you would see a second set of blessings now second set of blessings are based on verses 9 look at verses 9 if you obey my commands if you obey the commands of the lord your god and walk in his ways this is what the lord will do if you obey the commands of the lord your god and walk in you walk in his ways the first one if you listen to the voice of god the commands of god and obey them now he's saying if you obey the the commands of god and then walk in his ways there's an extra addition to that first it's voice now he's saying i need i want you to understand that obedience should come from your heart not because it's just a command first it was a command when you hear your commander say something you follow it that's hear your hear his voice and obey it now he's saying not only obey it but walk in his ways 
now make a choice to walk in his ways you see the you see the difference there that's what jesus said in john the book of john when he said if if you love me you will obey my commands if you love me you will obey now the this obedience came out of love you know that this is a gracious god who is doing so much even without me asking i will obey him whatever he says i will do it now you are doing it out of your desire the progression of obedience did you see that he moved them from a place of doing things auto, you know like a robot now he's saying don't be a robot i don't want you to be like that i want you to be a little big, bigger better than that i want you to do what i ask you to do out of your love for me now if you do things out of your love i will do things out of the turn do, do, you see the difference there are things that will go natural that must take natural course of action but for you because you are going you are doing things out of your love i will go out of turn and do things supernaturally your enemies will come at you verse 7 your enemies will come at you in one direction but i will make them run away from you in how many directions seven different directions they'll keep coming at you and hit you i don't know if you play video games you you know there are times that you play those those use this gun thing and and it'll keep splattering all over it's like that they'll keep hitting you but you you are still there they'll keep going in different seven different directions that's amazing by the way the verses 15 onwards it's exactly the opposite it's exactly the opposite he says you will attack your enemy in one direction but you will be scattered in seven different directions if you disobey your enemies will come in one direction and go in seven different ways but if you disobey it's the exact opposite seven different directions that, that's that's see enemies attacking us is not in our hands that's not something that we wish for and invite for god is saying that there are there are certain things that are not in your hand enemies attacking you is not in your hand then was he said the lord will guarantee a blessing in everything that you do and will store uh, and fill your storehouses with grain the lord will guarantee a blessing underline that word it's a guarantee i don't think we, we any one of us can 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 confidently say we will survive 2024 well tomorrow at least forget about 2024 we can work hard we never know whether we're going to get full salaries we can do all 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 the plans that we can and we still know that nothing may go exactly as we plan right am i right or wrong so he is saying no but i give a guarantee i take up the guarantee part that i'll make sure that you receive your fruit on time and your store is getting filled then look at what he says then all the people when when i start blessing you everybody around you will get, will be afraid of you because they begin to realize there's something else there's something different about you uh, you know your life your family it's something different about you and he will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body which means you your family your children your health in the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your ground and the land that he swore to your fathers to give you the lord will open his good heavens his treasure in heaven and make rain fall in its time which simply means this that things would go according to the schedule not plan according to the schedule it's one thing to go having things go according to plan it's a totally different thing to go have things go according to the schedule right every one of us who is serving in this church 
will have every Sunday on our WhatsApp group one single sheet that says 9.55, countdown starts. We never start countdown at 9.55. Never start. Did you know that? <laughs> you would know that. Never start at on time. We plan for it. Well, whatever we plan will go. Will happen. But it would be a great day in Capstone. I would celebrate that day when we do according to the schedule. Our production team is so happy about it. Did you, you see the difference, right? What God is guaranteeing is, not only I guarantee a return, I make sure things come on time. Schedule. That's phenomenal blessing. This is out of, you know, God is, doing, God is saying, I'll go out of the way to do something for you, simply because you decided to love me, obey me out of your love, out of your heart. So things that are in your hand will be blessed if you simply obey the God, obey the voice of God. But things would be a little different when you do, do those things out of love for Him. He'll go a little more uh, higher in the way He responds back. Did you know the exact opposite of it in those verses? I'm not reading them because you'll get depressed today, okay? So I'm just not reading them. But you should read them. Before you end this day, better read them. All the rest of the 54 verses, okay? The opposite of it is like this. The Lord will turn the rain into powder. The Lord will... I mean, rain means drops of water, right? He's saying, I'll turn it into powder. It'll be like... It will start like a rain, but it will fall like a powder. That's a sad sight, huh? by the way. The Lord will turn the ground into a branch. That's what he says. I will turn the land into a branch. Branch is unyielding, right? You cannot bend bronze. He's saying, I will make your ground, the workplace that you are working, right? It will not be fruitful at all. So fruit, so no matter how what you do no matter what how, how much you break your head it will not bring any fruit it will be a branch none of us want to be there okay by the way I, I don't mean to scare you today but i do mean it in one way because i i think it's very important for us to understand the priority that we should give to the voice of god so hear the voice of god obey the voice of god from the bottom of your heart, do it with love, and then he goes to a third level. Look at what he says in verses 13. If you listen to these commands of God, your, the, 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 of the Lord your God, that I'm giving you today, and if you carefully obey them, the Lord will make you head, not the tail. And you will always be on the top, never be at the bottom. You must never turn away. You must not turn away from any of the commands that I'm giving you today nor follow after any other gods and worship them. Actually, I should have read from verses 12, second half of verses 12 all the way to verses 14. Second half of verses 12 says, you will always be the giver, never the receiver. You will always be the head, never the tail. That's the promise of God. This is a totally different level of blessing. It's one thing to be blessed with what we have in our hands. It's a different thing to be blessed uh, with things that are not in our hands, but are, you know, miraculous in its nature. What God is saying is, I got a different plan. I want to keep you at a place where nobody else can reach there. This is God talking to his people, huh? you and me. That's the desire of God, that each one of us be at places. That we'll always be people who are head, never the tail. We'll always be the people who are generous, givers, never the receivers. Lenders, not the uh, debtors. But we'll, all, you know, we'll always be in a position of so high that others will begin to see that only God can do things like this with people like us. But that's not possible easily. The reason most of us never reach there 
is because the third commandment is the most difficult one to follow. Third level of obedience is most difficult. It sounds simplistic, but it is the most dif difficult one. Look at what he's saying. Listen, obey the commands. Don't, I, don't turn to right or left. Don't turn to right or left, meaning do it exactly as it says. How many of us do things exactly as the word of God says? Zero percent. Our excuses would be, but you know, that's impractical to do like that. No, no, you should change with the culture. You should change with the context. You should change with the times. We will say that. This is not how practical people will live. Somebody will say, even if we don't say it, somebody else will say, to, say that to us. Do, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? You, you can't bend the law of God for your taste or because somebody else told you to do that. Because it is comfortable for you and then expect God to make you head. He doesn't. He doesn't go, he doesn't, obviously he doesn't change his word. He's always going to stay true to what he says. So, none of us who are sitting here can ever say, God did not make me head even though I'm following. No, you didn't. You didn't. Just let's be honest about it. You just didn't. We will compromise. We will twist. We will make it convenient for ourselves. We will do what thing if it is comfortable for us. Otherwise, we won't. How many of us would come to service from next Sunday if I started at 5 o'clock in the morning? None of you. Except me standing here and preaching. Not even my team will come. I mean, of course, they will. They are very committed, of course. I can give a guarantee. None of you will turn up. If I change the service to 5 o'clock in the morning and say, start your Sunday morning at 5 o'clock. We will do what is convenient for us and then expect God to do what he promised. No, he doesn't. He is not obligated to do that. Never expect God to do what he promised if you are not doing what he is expecting of you. Don't turn to the right or to the left. Then he kind of made it a little more serious. He said, do not ever worship another God. Now you would be looking at me and saying, but, but I don't worship any other gods. No, you do. You, you worship yourself. Anything that replaces God, anything that takes priority over God in your life becomes your God. Your job, your business, your child, your ministry, anything that replaces God becomes your God. And as long as God is not the God of your life, you're never going to be the head. Never going to be at a place where you are always giving. So, God is not the one who's breaking the covenant here. His covenant with us is unshakable. Nobody can change that. He's always going to remain true to what he says. What Moses is trying to warn Israelites is, guys, you're going to get into a new land. This land is going to be great. You guys are coming out of slavery, went through 40 years of desert experience. Now you're going to enter into a land that is flowing with milk and honey. That things will, will be very different from what you were before, what you had before. God is blessing you for that, with, with all that, for your obedience. He's going to bless. In fact, if you, if you obey, he will multiply that. He'll keep multiplying it. He's not saying you will, you will get the land only if you obey. He's saying you will anyway get the land. Because God already promised it. Okay? Uh, that means every single day that you're living, it's, God, it's, God, it's God's promise already to you, graciously. Take it. I'm giving you a new day, not because of your obedience, but because I'm gracious. Every day you're getting added into your life is a gift from God. Every new year getting added into your life is a gift from God. Graciously, not the result of your, your, your obedience. It's not the result of your obedience. Your job is not the result of your obedience. 
The salary that you're getting every month is not the result of your obedience. They're already given to you. That's why the blessings start off with what you already have in your hand. Remember that. They're already given to you. What he's saying is, if you want that to be blessed, that to be in a place of blessing, then you better do what I tell you to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, my friends, New Year is a gift from, from God to you. Tomorrow is a gift from God to you. I'm sure all of us will enter, unless God has a specific will for any one of us here. But for, I, can, I can be sure, a little bit. Not as sure as India winning the World Cup, but, but you know, I'm sure all of us would be back here this evening, enter into 2024 with, with joy and gladness and gratitude. It's a gift from God. It can become a blessing or a curse to you, 2024, in your, by your hand, your actions. It has nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with us. If this does not become priority. So Moses is saying, listen, when God gives you all this, don't make that your, your God. When you get all the crops and all these blessings, don't look at all of them and think that, ah, oh, I got everything. No, you didn't. You just got it because God gave you. Your job is a gift from God. Don't make your job a God. Your child is a gift from God. Don't make your child a, gift, a God for you. Your life should not revolve around your child. Your life should revolve around your God. Your child is a consequence of your obedience to God. That's why Psalm 127, David says, children are a reward by God. God gives the children to us as a gift. I'm using children because that's the most... The, the thing that we are very attached to. That's why I'm using... I love my children, by the way. Okay? And I would go to any length to do anything for them. But not more than what I do for God. We must come to that place and say, not more than what I do for God. I do everything for my child, but not more than what I do for God. When you are there, then God says, then you'll be head. Then you'll always be in a place of giving not in a place of receiving. I pray that this year you will, you will reach to that place, those places. 2024 can be a supernatural year. 2024 can be a year where God fulfills His covenant in your life. If you obey His commands. Okay? This evening I'll take, I'll take from here to the to, to unshakable promise of God and um, a promise that God wants to give to all of us if we choose to obey. And I'll take the same, same thing, I'll take it from a different context. Okay? I'm, so that you know that I'm not reading things out of context. I'll take you to a different context and I'll take you there because that's where God spoke to me 15 days ago um, for, for this year, coming here for us. And you would know that they both mean the same. All right? Let's close our eyes. If you did, did not listen, pay attention to the voice of God this year, at least today, make a promise to Him. Make it a commitment. Make it a, make it a mm, commitment that I want to listen to the voice of God. That I want to obey the voice of God. From today, starting from today, that God becomes a priority to me. His word becomes a priority to me. I will follow whatever he tells me to do. Take this moment to pray that prayer of commitment to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, we praise you, God. Praise you, Jesus. This morning, if, we, if you know that you are guilty of disobedience, 
I know I am guilty of disobedience. Would you just take this moment to confess and rededicate your life? Now I know we are not perfect. I know that we are always going to struggle. But at least it's a good start that we acknowledge our failure. And we say, God, we want to. We want to do what you ask us to do. We want to follow the word of God as it is. And now I know sometimes things may get difficult because we are trying to do what you ask us to do. Would you just help us to live our lives upright in your sight? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Would you just take that moment? And if you know that you are that person who is praying that prayer, would you like to stand to your feet um, right now along with me? And as I pray, recomm- let's recommit ourselves to him. And say, God, help us, God, today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Take this moment to acknowledge your lack of obedience and and then the thing is this that if god spoke to us it means he's he's showing grace to us he's a good father you know he's showing grace to us and he's saying listen i don't want anything to happen to you i want you to have a wonderful 2024 a blessed one i want your family to be blessed your children to be blessed the work of your hand be blessed your christian walk be so fruitful that through your life many would come to saving knowledge of Jesus. I want you to be in that position. And that's why I'm, I'm talking to you today and asking you to reconsider your life, reflect on it, recommit yourself. So it's a loving God who's talking to us. His tone may sound harsh today, but he's a loving God. And I pray and beg you to accept that grace. Thank you, God. This morning we stand here in your presence, God. And we acknowledge your goodness in our lives. You're a good, good father. A wonderful father. A gracious one. We don't deserve to be where we are today, but it's only by your grace. And as we stand here, All of us, we acknowledge our lack of obedience to your word. Sometimes because we are influenced by our circumstances and people. Sometimes because of of our own lack of understanding of the word of God. Sometimes because we simply did not spend time listening to your voice. Not that we don't love you, but simply that, you know, We stopped paying attention to you. Would you put fear back in our hearts? Love back in our hearts. So that we may pay attention to your voice. Receive it with reverence. And obey it. With a heart full of faith and a heart full of love. Would you help us God? Would you help me God? To pay attention to your voice. To do what you ask me to do. Not because I'm obligated to do it, but because I love to do it. And here is what I know. That when I keep doing it consistently, not turning to the right or to the left, but to keep you as the focus of my life, you promise to take me to places that I would never even imagine in my wildest dreams. So I commit myself to that God. Not because I want to reach heights, but because I enjoy following you. I pray for everyone who's praying their prayer as they stand here and offering themselves to you. I pray that you would begin to work in our lives in such a way that God, that we would begin to experience a transformed life in 2024. Bless you, God. So we acknowledge your goodness and your love in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. I accept our worship this morning, God. to sit at your feet to receive your word. And God, express our gratitude through our song. Truly, we can never measure 
what you have done for us and so we offer our praise is immeasurably god thank you for today and as we go back to our homes and get ready for coming back to he- this place to worship you this evening with gratitude and enter into a new year with prayer i pray that you prepare our lives our our our, our us god our bodies and our spirits and our hearts take control of them god and i pray that um, as we gather this evening would you move in our midst in a very special way your word of god is powerful your promises of god are life giving and so we look to you this evening to speak into our lives just as you spoke right now to me in this place this morning as we as we as we, you reminded us that your word must be paid attention to may we become very careful with the way that we become attentive to your voice not just for today but through all our lives because just by paying attention to your voice fully we receive a blessing and there are consequences to it god so i pray that you would help us to become very sensitive to your voice always bless you god i want to thank you for all our children we praise you for our children god we thank you for these precious gifts i pray that your choices blessings be upon them help them to le- develop a le- uh, 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 you know hearing ear i pray that they would become careful listeners to the voice of god so that they may be blessed and they may become a blessing to others god thank you and we bless you in jesus name we pray amen let's do the lord's prayer together our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen now may the love of our father and the grace of his son jesus christ and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with each one of us now and forever and all god's people said amen amen